Hi, my name is Joe Anderson, and I am a gastroenterologist at the White River Junction VA in Vermont. I'm also on faculty at Dartmouth College and UConn Medical School. I want to thank Gastrointestinal Endoscopy for allowing me, on behalf of my co-authors, to present our data in video form for our upcoming article, Providing Data to Establish Benchmarks for Serrated Pilot Detection Rates and Analysis of the New Hampshire Colonoscopy Registry. My co-authors are Lynn Butterly, who's the director of the NHCR, as well as a gastroenterologist and on faculty at Dartmouth College, Julie Weiss, who is a data analyst, and Christina Robinson, who is a co-author and co-investigator. Serrated pilot detection rate benchmarks would be important since this pathway may account for a large proportion of colorectal cancer, is detected in a large proportion of screen colonoscopies, and because it's difficult to detect due to flat shape and indistinct border, there's significant variation in serrated pilot detection rates. Therefore, data to guide benchmark SDR recommendations is warranted, and we felt that the NHCR would be a great resource due to the vast number of practices and endoscopists that we have, including 150,000 exams and 130,000 patients. We've been collecting comprehensive colonoscopy data from 2004 to present, so we felt this would be a great resource to answer this question due to the ability for the practice, um, the practice variation to provide generalizable data. The goal was to utilize screening ADR from endoscopists to determine an appropriate SDR for screen colonoscopies, with the idea being endoscopists who had a higher ADR might similarly achieve higher SDR. The two rates we looked at were, one, a simple rate, just looking at all serrated polyps proximal to the sigmoid. So in other words, this would be any exam with a serrated polyp proximal to the sigmoid divided by total exams. Or the more uh, d uh, difficult to calculate or the uh, clinically significant serrated polyp detection rate, which would involve looking at size and location any polyp greater than five millimeters in proximal to the sigmoid, or any serrated polyp greater than a centimeter anywhere. We felt that although a little bit more difficult to calculate, these would reflect the serrated polyps that may have malignant potential, i.e. the sessile serrated adenoma slash polyps. We looked at nearly 50,000 colonoscopies, of which 30,000 were screening, median age 59, 47.5% male uh, uh, participants, uh, 20 endoscopy facilities, 77 endoscopists, and these were the characteristics. Now, a first interesting finding is the fact that when you stratify by ADR, you see that younger endoscopists achieve higher ADR. You also see that higher ADR is more likely to be achieved among uh, gastroenterologists than non-gastroenterologists. And finally, the higher the normal withdrawal time for endoscopists, the higher the proportion uh, achieving 35% or more. So therefore, more careful endoscopists were achieving high ADRs. So not surprisingly, when you look at the categories for ADR, you'll see that there is an increase in the CSDR as well as PSDR. So not surprising, with, with increase of ADR, there's an increase of SDR for both rates. Now, one thing I have to caution the viewers about is that there were a few endoscopists uh, who had a high ADR but not an adequate SDR, and vice versa. So um, it was not a correlation in all endoscopists. With regard to the overall correlation, both, re both separated polyp rates detect, um, detection rates correlated with ADR, and they both correlated with each other, which, which is important for potential interchangeability between the two rates. So if we want an ADR of 25%, the rates for CSDR as well as PSDR are the following. And if we want a higher ADR, these would be the rates of the endoscopists that achieved a higher ADR. In other words, those, these are the rates for CSDR and PSDR individuals that had 35% or more. And you can see that they're higher. So the conclusion was endoscopists with higher ADR achieved higher SDR, likely due to better techniques such as withdrawal time. But remember, this was not correlated in everybody. Both rates did correlate with ADR, which was good. Our data suggests that if you have an ADR of 25% as your goal, your corresponding CSDR should be 7%. And since the CSDR and PSDR were correlated, 
an acceptable benchmark might be the simpler PSDR of 11%. So in other words, of all exams that you do, 11% should have a severity of proximal to the sigmoid. And finally, I want to caution the viewers again that since they were correlated, some might feel that the SDR is superfluous. However, we feel it's still needed for quality as they um, may, may not um, be correlated in some endoscopies. In other words, some endoscopies may have a high ADR and a low SDR. So I think once you achieve adequate ADR and SDR, I think you can use the ADR as a sur surrogate, but we still feel that a one-time SDR um, rate is still needed. I want to thank the Gastrointestinal Endoscopy Journal for allowing us to present our, our um, paper, but also these funding sources, in particular the Norris Cotton Cancer Center at Dartmouth-Hitchcock, American Cancer Society, CDC, and National Cancer Institute. Thank you.